today on Ask This Old House. These utensils were made with scrap wood and hand tools, and I'll show you how to build it. To dish this out, I'm gonna use my curved gouge, and I wanna work my way around, so I'm cutting off the grain as I go down. A common problem every homeowner is faced with, they move a picture, they patch the hole from the old picture hanger, and yep. now they've gotta match the paint. Not always easy to do. The front of this historic home is completely bare. I'll add foundation plantings to make it look like they've always been here. And we'll look at some home inspection nightmares. Oh, oh, oh one of your jobs right. again? That's right. <laughs> <laughs> For projects around the house, Home Advisor helps find local pros to do the work. You can check ratings, read customer reviews, and book appointments with pros online at HomeAdvisor.com. HomeAdvisor is proud to support Ask This Old House. Hey everybody, I'm Kevin O'Connor and welcome back to Ask This Old House and to the final episode of our 17th season. We have gotten a lot of great questions from all of you, answered as many as we possibly could, and we're going to continue to answer a few today. Hey, Jen. Hey, how are you? Oh, I'm so glad you got the email about the potluck party today. I'm very excited. Yeah, um, wow. I actually threw this pot, meaning I made it, and, uh, and grew the lettuce inside. I brought plastic and you brought the fine chain. You're a potter? I so I try to be at times. Boy, you are really stepping it up here in the clubhouse. Just, Lovely we'll, we'll recycle that, don't worry. Okay. What's hey, going Pops, on? How are you? I'm good. What's going on? What's I going actually on? have to go, so can you put that in the fridge for me? And uh, I'll sure. see you this in a little bit. I could definitely do that. What's going on? Well, did you get my email? Your email? My email. About you the know, potluck I, supper. I, I only read about it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I brought something. Would. <laughs> I know that you did not bring that, Tommy. We were all supposed to bring something. Don't you worry. I got it covered. I am worried. Well, Jen made the pot, made the salad, and you're making stuff up. I said I got it covered. Hi, Wayne. Hi, Jen. How's it going? It's great. Thank you for coming out. Thanks for having me. I love your house. Thank you. It's, uh, it was built in 1872. Mm -hmm. uh, we've been here for about three years, mm -hmm. and we've been working on it a bit. It was all white when we started. Mm -hmm. It's now blue and white. Um, there were a lot of large bushes up against the house, and we took them out, made the painting easier. Right. But it really needs something in front of the house. Right, and well, this is great for me because it's like a blank palette, and then I have something to play off of, all the detail of the house, maybe the time period the house was built, um, and maybe we could bring that, that charm back in. Nice. And then uh, I think I have a plan of what we can install. Excellent. So you get to help me. All right. All right. <laughs> okay, I want to take a hose or something flexible to mark out the bed lines. What I want is a arc. Okay. We're playing off this bay window. I want to get the plants away from the foundation, mm -hmm. and it's going to be like a double layered bed. Awesome. Now we've got to clean out all of the grass and weeds in this area. Why don't you start with that edging shovel and I'll use the grub hoe. Maybe we should have made it smaller. No, it's going to be worth it. All right. this lilac out of the foundation. It's typical of a Victorian period, but it's in the wrong spot for this design. Perfect. Okay, Wayne, so I like to stage the plants once I have the design so you see what it looks like above ground mm -hmm. before we plant them. So right. I've chosen these two Green Mountain boxwoods to flank the entry. They're gonna be slower growers and they're gonna be a perfect plant for your entryway. How tall will they get at the end though? These get about five feet tall, but okay. everything is prunable. Okay. But they're not aggressive growers. So this is a hedge of green velvet boxwood. It's a dwarf boxwood, so it's gonna stay small. Mm -hmm. And I have it going arcing all the way over as just the rhythm of the front. It has a nice clean swoop. Nice. In the middle here, I have it open for perennials and bulbs. So you can have spring color, summer color, and just it'll make the garden feel and look different. Okay. This these limelight hydrangeas, they're dwarf hydrangeas, and this will be the backdrop for those perennials in the front of the bed. 
and they flower late in the season, I say August to September. And then coming down here, we have this viburnum. Um, again, all the flowers I picked, I tried to pick Victorian type flowers, maybe like old fashioned flowers. Uh, I love the contrast of this dark leaf. This is gonna flower May. It's gonna be white, it's gonna be beautiful. Nice. And, and it's always good to repeat things in the garden. So it feels more unified. Uh, coming over here, we have this Rosa Sharon, and I put another one on the other side of the house, and then a, a white azalea as well on both sides of the house. Mirrored. Mirrored, exactly. Okay. So it ties the theme through. Nice. So if we have your approval, I think we should probably get started planting. Absolutely. It looks amazing. All right. Great. Cool. How deep do I have to go down? Um, go down a little bit further than the height of the bucket, and then twice as wide with the hole. Okay. We're gonna mix compost into the existing soil, which will add nutrients and give the plants a healthy start. So I'm gonna take this. It's not too bad, so we can do this with our hands. We're gonna just loosen up the roots so they're not pot bound and wrap around and they'll have a good start to getting in the soil. Cool. All right, you may do the honors. Ah, thank you. All right, so that looks a little bit low to me. We're gonna pull it back out. Let's put some soil in. Okay, try that. All right, that looks good to me. I'll hold it in place and you can backfill it. Excellent. I'm gonna get some starter fertilizer. Okay. Put a little bit around it. We only have 27 more. <laughs> See, gravity's your friend. Excellent. All right, so let's loosen up the roots again. Now, isn't the organic starter fertilizer more necessary when you're going to eat it? No, it's better for you, your family, and the environment. I would say we'd bring this side around. Up but, towards you? Yeah. All right. How's that? That looks good. All right. I'm going to lift it up and you pull the burlap off. Sure. Sweet. Perfect height. You can start spreading that out. Okay. Just don't cover the base of the plants. Right. Okay. We're gonna spread this bark mulch about two to three inches thick. So the mulch getting down really is starting to make it look finished. It's just like rolling out sod. It's that final finish touch. Nice. So Jen, this looks amazing. I think it looks incredible. And look at the curb appeal. No, it's awesome. It fits with the house, it wraps right around, and it looks good from every side. And it's elegant and simple. So in a couple years time, it's going to fill in. Just keep on top of the once a year pruning. Keep it watered, and, and I think you're set. Awesome. Well, thank you very much. You're welcome. Thanks for having me. Mm -hmm. Good job. From time to time, home inspectors from all across the country send us their most ridiculous finds. And we, of course, take them for a walk. So, fellas, do we have any keepers? Oh, we got some good ones. Yeah. Here's, uh, here's oh. a good one right here. This is. <laughs> look at the roof. Do you see anything wrong with that roof? <laughs> no, nothing at all. They call that an uncut valley right there. Uh, that's <laughs> definitely an uncut valley, and all the water from this roof here is going right under that valley. So uh -huh. you know. But it comes out through the other side. Yeah, I don't <laughs> think so. <laughs> totally done wrong. This yeah. roof should have been done before this roof, so it all laid on top, and you cut a nice, neat line down yeah. there if you don't want to flash the valley. But they got a really good price on this roof. Oh yeah, and they'll yeah. pay for it forever. <laughs> yeah. Look at mine. Now this is a beautiful tile job. See, it sort of looks a bit like an Escher painting, Wait a little a minute, spacey, though. right? Is this the bottom of a shower? This is the bottom of a shower stall, but there's only oh, one thing missing. Kevin? There's no drain. There's no drain. Right. Plumber, plumber did not show up in time. Wow. God, I'd be yeah. kidding. You can't get everything, right? He missed the diamond. But you know, we yeah. can always put in a pump. It's like a, oh, it's like a soaking tub now. <laughs> Wait until you guys see this. Oh, oh, one of your okay. jobs again? That's right. <laughs> we have a mason that what's leads this? to the left. <laughs> what's this with the bump out right there? Well, actually, what they're trying to do, Tom, is put a, a fireplace on the first floor. Oh, really? They didn't have the room. Should have gone wider with the footing. No footing, yeah. 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 They didn't, so they corbelled out to get yeah. the room. Yeah. Unbelievable. And then they went a little to the left. Yeah, that's what happens. <laughs> that's what happens. <laughs> okay, so what do you do? You just move the whole house to the right. <laughs> so that's why we put it on rollers. Yeah, we'll just move yeah. it back and forth. Yeah. Unbelievable. There's no shortage of these pictures. It's unbelievable. And if you got any. We'd love to see them. we got nothing better to do. Send them our way. Yeah. It's amazing. That's a crooked mason right there. <laughs> 
All right, Mauro, a common problem every homeowner is faced with. They move a picture, they patch the hole from the old picture hanger, and yep. now they've got to match the paint. Not always easy to do. Not always easy to do, Kevin. First thing, when we come to this situation, one couple of good information that I need, um, who manufactured the paint? Okay. What color was it? Right. And what sheen was it? Okay. Um, and what do you do? The homeowner says, boy, I don't know, but maybe there's a can of it kicking around somewhere. Absolutely. I will try the basement, see if there's a leftover can down here. Yeah. I'll check the garage. So that's the best case scenario. You find a can in the basement. Worst yeah. case scenario, no can in the basement. Homeowners can't tell you anything about the paint on the wall. What are you doing then? Well, I carry my color wheel with me at all the times. Mm -hmm. So I can try to get a color here closer to the wall. Let's put them up, look at the swatches. Okay. Yep. You probably have one. You do have one of these. Homeowners I do probably have one. Yes. don't, though. If you're not working with one of these, if they don't have one, homeowners usually don't have one. They can go to a home center or a local paint store and can get those painting chips that can get it closer to the wall as possible. You can pull these off of the rack, try to find a match. But that's a lot of back and forth and no guarantee for success. Absolutely. In that case, since we can't get any luck in getting the you know, closer color to this, I will have my utility knife and I'll choose a place that's right, a wall behind a piece of furniture and we'll cut a little piece. And so there is a little layer of paper on the drywall. You're Absolutely trying to that. slice off just that? Yeah, we'll try to take just the paper out. Mm -hmm. If we can get, then we'll take the whole piece out. Okay. There you go. So I'm going to bring it to the paint store or the home center, what they have, electronic readers. It will read this color, and then we can have a customized paint to match that color weight. And the color reader will then tell the machine which pigments and how much of them to put into the, the raw paint. To make Absolutely. A new liquid. Yeah, that's going to be a custom match that we have here. So I'm going to open this can. Is that what that can is? That's actually something you had custom made off of a scan? Off of the scan, they gave me this formulation with it close, very close to the wall color here. All right, so let's talk technique. Right, um, technique. When we have like a small patches like this, I like to use this foam brushes. Yeah. It's nice and soft. Mm -hmm. This is what we need for those small patches. Obviously, it's a little different color now, but when that sets up, you think you're going to have a nice match when it dries? I think it's going to be very, very close. So that's sufficient for a couple small nail holes, even for the repair that you're going to make where you peel this piece of paper away. Absolutely. That's going to be a new patch right there. Let's say there's more damage. An electrician's moved some outlets around, and now we've got a couple holes or bigger holes. At okay. what point are we repainting the entire wall? Well, if it's bigger than this two here, we might as well paint the whole wall. Just one wall? I mean, so, when are we painting the adjacent walls? Well, it's all depends on how old this paint job was. How old? Exactly. And how much light is breaking into this room. So you don't see it. You paint one wall, maybe you have to paint another more, wall. And, and more light means what? That it's faded the older paint? It's or that faded. so much light will uh, give you less of a place to disguise? The sun hits the wall, the color fades. Yeah. It's, it's an old paint job. Yeah. So we might as well paint this wall and the wall next to it. And are you ever in a situation where you say, I'm not even going to try to match, I'm just going to go right to repainting the whole room? Absolutely. When we get to match darker colors like dark red, dark brown, dark greens, don't waste your time with touch-ups. not going to work. Not going to work? Absolutely not. You might as well paint the whole wall or even all the walls in this room. Okay. Good information, Mauro. And of course, if you don't have the color written down or a can in the basement, make sure when you get uh, the new can, hang on to the information. Save it. It's going to save you a lot of money, too. All right, thanks. Tommy, a build-it project. What are you thinking? Well, remember that wine cabinet that we built out of that old beam that I salvaged off a job? I do. That thing was awesome. <laughs> right. Well, here's some scrap wood that I saved from those pieces that we made. Right. And I love to save old scraps of wood because you never know what you're going to do with it. White pine, if I recall? Right. White pine. And it's uh, old growth, so it's nice and tight. And you think of pine as being soft wood. And this is soft, but because that grain's so tight, it's relatively strong. All right. Well, there's not much left here, Tommy. Just scraps. What are you <laughs> thinking of making with this? We're not going to build a big project. We're going to build a couple of salad utensils, a spoon and a fork. Hmm. I actually traced these this morning before I left the house of a couple of utensils that I have. 
and we're going to do it all by hand, no power tools. No power tools. So not even uh, get a bandsaw in there, just at least rough out the basic shape? No, we've got a bandsaw, but let's do it the old-fashioned way. Let's take our hand tools, see how we want to make our cuts, shave it, plane it, pull it, rasp it, right. carve it, whatever it takes. Well, definitely more accessible if you don't bring the power tools. I mean, I don't even have a bandsaw, so. Yeah, a lot of people don't. And it's a great weekend project that you can do with your kid. All right, how do you want to start? All right, we're gonna get started by taking one of these utensils and find a piece of wood that it fits on. You want to look it over, make sure we don't have any knots in it. And we'll just trace it out. And when you're tracing it, you don't have to be real fussy because we're gonna fine tune it and modify it as needed with our tools. All right, so that looks good. I think we're ready to start cutting. We'll make a rough cut on our length and maybe a couple of kerf cuts to relieve it as we cut the curve with the coping saw. Now most hand saws cut on the down motion. We're gonna use a pull saw, which means all the cuts are made when you pull it towards you. You can see they have two different teeth. One has a large one, that's for ripping, and the other side is a small one, that's for cross-cutting. All right, we're making a series of relief cuts almost down to the line, so when we cut on the line, those pieces will fall off. All right, so now we're gonna make a rough thickness cut. Cut roughly. All right, so you're good there? Yep. All right, so I'm going to reset mine in the vise and I'm going to cut the curve of the spoon out with my coping saw. A coping saw is good for cutting curves because it has a thin, flexible blade. All right, now we're gonna start fine tuning and shaping our spoon. We're gonna use whatever it takes to make it happen. We're gonna use some rough cutting rasp, finer rasp, a plane, a spoke shave, and we'll just start forming it. A spoke shave was originally designed to make the spokes on wagon wheels. Now a spoke shave is like a plane with a very short body on it so you can make curves and radiuses with it, but there has two handles on each side to control it. What's the story with these rasps, Tommy? They look a little different. Yeah, they are a little different. They actually have carbide tips on them. They stay sharp for a long time, and they can be very aggressive. And just like any rasp, it allows you to cut the wood in any direction. All right, we've got them pretty well roughed out right now, but now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna clamp mine to the table. And to dish this out, I'm gonna use my curved gouge, work my way in and actually use this part of it, this, I'm gonna call this the heel right here, as a fulcrum to work it under the wood. I always wanna go with the grain because if I go down too deep here and as I come up, I'll actually tear it out on this side. So I'm gonna go down to my deepest point and then go back in from the other side.
So I'm trying to work my way down into the lowest part of the dish here. And I want to work my way around so I'm cutting off the grain as I go down. A lot of people say, why wouldn't you just use a chisel for this? And a chisel wouldn't carve it or remove the wood right. So you need a curved gouge and you just work your way down in and smooth it out. Okay, our pieces are all roughed out. You can see these rough marks that are left here from the gouge and also from the rasp. We wanna get all of those out of here. So now it's time to start hand sanding. We're gonna use three different grits. We're gonna start off with an 80 grit. And we're gonna go up to a 120. And then we're gonna finish them off with a 240. All right, we're all sanded, so now we'll just wipe it down with a tack cloth to remove all the dust. Now that we have all our dust removed, we're ready to apply our finish, and we're gonna use a food grade of finish, and it's actually beeswax and mineral oil mixed together. We'll just apply it uh, with a rag. Now lots of times you can just use mineral oil on this and that's fine to protect it, but the beeswax adds a little bit of a sheen to it. Gives it a nice look. I like it, very subtle, but yeah. just enough to make the grain pop. It does too, doesn't it? Okay, Tom. All right. There Not too bad for a couple pieces of scrap wood that were destined for the garbage. Yeah, and it was a lot of fun, I think. You know what, very relaxing to make. I like working with hand tools. Nice, good idea. Right, huh? Everybody got the email, everybody brought something for the potluck. Well, almost everybody. Hey, look at this beautiful bowl that Jen made and the salad, right? That's We well, have to get the salad out of the bowl. What? Look you at just that. made those. Those don't count. Oh, calm down, Sonny. Calm down. I got it covered. I got it covered. Oh! Apologies, I apologize. I apologize. Well done, Tommy. And well done, everybody. Congratulations on 17 seasons. Nice job. All right. All right. Well, that is a wrap for us. We will see you next time. All right. Let's party. What do you guys say? Not much of a part luck here. Tommy. Mm. Thanks for watching. This old house has got a video for just about every home improvement project. So be sure to check out the others. And if you like what you see, click on the subscribe button. Make sure that you get our newest videos right in your feed.